people are familiar that you know uh, one of the social issues that's discussed uh, regarding OFWs is the, the social implications, social costs of the family. What, yes. what are you um, looking uh, to do about the families left here? What are, are, what are the marching orders from the president, if any? You know, the, the first time I met the president, that was after, um, I think, after he won, after mm -hmm. the election results were um, final. And um, he asked to see me and I went to his house and he was very particular about the children of OFWs, especially those who's, who, uh, who's, who are growing up with both parents away. Abroad, yeah. oh, oh. So sabi niya, that's part of the social cost and we need to address that. And so he, he asked me to look at how we can develop programs for the families okay. of migrant workers. Sabi niya, don't just focus on the workers. Okay. Let's help also the families. Well, so, yeah, this yeah. is quite interesting because you're, you, you made it very particular that what you don't want to happen is intergenerational yes. OFWs. Yes. What, what do you have in mind? I guess is, this is, is that part of what we're talking about here, Nana, when you're looking after their family, I suppose, yes. right? Because there are like um, OFWs, uh, the, ma the moms live as kasambahays, mm. and then yung mga anak ng babae, and then it, you know, right. na nagiging, it's a generational thing, no? Right. What we want is to look at reintegration mm. pathways na pag umuwi na kasambahay, pero marunong magluto ng halal, o kaya Marunong That's ng, a big uh, business here in Asia. Now. Yes, yeah. marunong ng ano, mag, uh, pwede ng mag-hotel housekeeping. Yeah. Oo. So we, we are looking at and we want to work closely with TESDA on building those career pathways right. for the most vulnerable workers. So pag umaakyat siya sa career ladder, right. yung nalelesen yung burden sa mga anak to follow suit. No? Right, right. And, and um, we want Yung sinabi ni Presidente sa zona niya, we want um, the OFWs to be inspirational, no? Sabi nga niya, inspirational stories of all times, no? Right. Yung nang hanap niya. So we right. want really a more up uplifting uh, environment for OFWs. And that would include helping the children. Right. So we are rolling out um, programs that will organize the children of OFW so that we can um, enroll them in uh, creative writing courses, we can open the doors to music and the oh, arts. Maybe Manila Times and Esteban and I can uh, partner yes, with you on Yes, we are really looking for private sector partners okay. because we want as many companies, mm -hmm. NGOs, even schools and media orga organizations um, helping us in this mission. Because right. you can just imagine if you have around 5 million OFWs uh, outside the country, just times four, no? on the yeah. average, there's so many children that we need to wow. reach out to. Yeah. So, but we're really excited about developing programs for them. Let me take a quick step back. Again, going going into policy, mm -hmm. is there um, talks about maybe um, pursuing the higher value-added jobs abroad rather than um, the domestic help? Nothing wrong with that, of course. But yes, but the, the domestic helpers are normally the ones prone to abuse and, right. and, and other offenses. Yes. Um, but it makes sense to some that maybe we should be trying to nudge them up the career ladder so that they're not so exposed in, well, in those kinds of jobs. There is basis in law. Okay. Because um, uh, in the uh, law creating the Department of Migrant Workers, um, there's a provision there that uh, our migrant workers should be well trained, well prepared okay. for, for the life of, uh, you know, that they will be facing abroad. And um, tama ka, uh, Clint, no, that um, the skilled workers, especially the professionals, 
are protected by the very nature of the skills that they bring. Right. So the employers would not want to let them go. Right. They would take very good care of them because they don't want to pirate. Right. Oh, oh. Especially the nurses, the engineers. The nurses, yeah. yeah and yeah. and do you know that um, in Croatia, they, they uh, a delegation came to see me and they wanted to hire so many. Free. Sabi nila, we are 95% Roman Catholic. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're interested in the Philippines. So sabi nila, we might be needing mga 100,000 workers wow. for, for ho the What? hospitality because tourism oh, wow. is booming. Right. So for the hospitalis hospitality sector alone and right. we're interested in in um, having this uh, arrangement with the government so so yung ganon um, so what kind of policies are we, are we looking at um, is we, the DFW looking at maybe setting a, a floor to the wages that that um, uh, are offered to Filipino workers uh, being recruited abroad uh, maybe let Indonesia Bangladesh Uh, fill in those other positions that are usually prone it's, to abuse? It's ano? so hard to like okay. balance, no? Kasi right. um, if we say let's stop deploying domestic right. workers, right. they're bound to leave anyway. Right. They'll find a way. They'll find a way and then they leave unprotected. Right. So we, what we are looking at um, is coming up with a different set of rules. So yung sa skilled and professional workers, we can have like um, quicker deployment. Kasi their, their employers are easier to validate, no? Mm -hmm. May mga financial statements and, 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 and track records, multicultural yung work environment. But yung ano kasi retail eh, yung mm -hmm. um, employers ng domestic workers, Oras na yung worker na punta sa bahay nila, mm -hmm. invisible na sa mata ng kahit ng gobyerno ng employer. Right, eh. right. It's so difficult. Um, but having said that, there's dignity in labor and there are also a lot of success stories mm -hmm. involving our kasambahays. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is have um, a more elaborate set of rules mm -hmm. sa point of application pa lang, mm -hmm. they should be trained and they should be uh, well prepared, country specific yung employment contracts okay. and um, yung on-site services siguro mas, mas uh, um, focused, mas enhanced yung monitoring right. system namin for domestic workers. So, uh, are there certain countries that you're looking at more closely? Because I think during the term of President Duterte, I think they had some issues with, I think, Kuwait, if correct me if I'm wrong, yes. and some other Middle Eastern countries. Uh, but yes. I think they're trying, they were trying to resolve those issues, and I think right. what the government was hoping for was some protection for the Filipinos being deployed there. I remember that uh, the Department of Foreign Affairs uh, led by negotiated. Secretary Loxin and um, UMWA under Secretary Sara um, Ariola. Uh, the DFA then was very vocal about the Kafala system, okay. which is the sponsorship system na um, the employer holds the visa. Mm. And, and uh, that's why the passports are with the employers. Right. No? Right. Um, but uh, that's a continuing conversation among states, the labor sending states and the labor receiving states. No? Um, we are looking at country-specific employment contracts. We are also looking at reviving talks with Saudi Arabia. Okay. Um, they are very interested in um, hiring more Filipino construction okay. workers and engineers okay. for their Vision 2030 infrastructure development program. I think they, they want to build a city out of nothing. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's a very ambitious plan. Yes. yes. Oh, oh, and, and they've been talking to us and we're quite open about that. And in fact, we're, we're eager to also talk to them about that. But at the same time, we've been seeing a um, continuous flow of welfare cases involving our domestic workers. 
So that would have to be a separate conversation. I see. And and uh, with with more protective um, measures, no. And we're also we we've reached out to our Saudi counterpart, and um, we are looking at including in the talks a separate agreement against human trafficking okay. against the trafficking of Filipino migrant workers. Kasi napapansin namin, nandito yung employer based okay. POEA contract, right. and then nabibenta sa ibang employer, right. and then, which makes it absolutely difficult for us to monitor right. the whereabouts and conditions of our workers. So what's the status of those talks? Uh, is it on a negotiation stage, or you're finalizing the I, agreement? Uh, I have received a okay. formal invitation okay. from the Saudi government to visit them. Um, we are forming a technical working group that would um, make an inventory of all the issues. I will be sending um, an advanced team led by uh, my incoming undersecretary, uh, P.Y. Kaunan, and, and uh, POEA administrator Bernard Olalia, just to get the talks going. And then I will be there by hopefully, uh, inshallah, sabi nga nila, <laughs> hopefully by uh, first week of September or maybe last week of August. All right, well, it seems like you have your hands full, but we have to take another break before we proceed. You're watching SMNI's Business and Politics. I'm Dante Klinkang. We'll be back shortly.